Hello, I'm Al Fry, and in the following presentation you're going to be exposed to some little known and long hidden truths concerning the origin of the Bible stories. And at first, this may not coincide with what you've been taught, and it may cause a little consternation. Do not be upset, however. It is not our intention to degrade the value of the Bible. And if you will continue on, I think you'll be delighted at the new and useful information that you encounter here. The Bible does contain a great deal of inspired truths, or it would not have survived this long, and inspired so many to a better set of ethics. The Bible was assembled by humans, however, and it's not reasonable to assume this was done in perfection. Humans are not perfect. And in this work you'll be exposed to many new concepts that can widen your perspectives and help you go past the usual limitations of fundamentalism. Well, the Bibles of the world all contain a great deal of truth. And truth consists of doctrines of both free choice and domination mixed together. It is you who must decide which set of values you must live by. The values of a, gen a vengeful eye for an eye philosophy or the values of a golden rule and a grant each other choice philosophy. And since the Garden of Eden we've all had choice and it can be your choice to continue on toward more understanding and awareness at this point. Well, to understand where the ancients got many of their myths, it's important to have a little background in what constitutes matter and where our intelligence came from. At the heart of all material things, we have a non-physical, non-material atom structure which holds this material atom structure together in the material form that we have. And in the case of life forms, we have a spiritual prototype residing in the seed or egg. Well, this non-material atom structure carries itself over in the egg, and the species knowledge is accumulated and kept in this egg knowledge assembly. In all animal forms, this knowledge is in perfection. The animal carries a perfect instinct knowledge to function in its particular environment. And they cannot function like other animals or humans, as in this picture. In the case of we humans, or species Homo sapien, there's a problem. Now, thousands of years ago, our species was contaminated with an intelligence outside of our species. And ever since this time, we've lived in chaos and confusion. Our species' instincts have been continually overridden with a new and imperfect mind component. Now, this vacillating mind input has created constant uncertainty and a very slow attrition of knowledge through painful trial and error. Well, in the egg or seed knowledge of Earth, there lies a spiritual backing of intelligence. And as long as this intelligence puts out the energy to the seeds, they can reproduce their species and can be considered life. Since the learn life is the most ancient interpretation, meaning that which can reproduce or sustain itself, well, since all seeds carry the genetic patterns or plans of the species, there is no moral or rational reason back of the life form, only the various energy ties with a creator or universe, and the sun giving radiations and the joy energies from the creator. Well, unfortunately, the joy frequencies of humans got cut off thousands of years ago. And while most animals are full of affection and joy, 
Few humans ever even feel this wavelength. Any dog or cat you give a little affection will demonstrate a complete freedom from distrust and negativity. They'll give the affection back to you. We humans carry by total reciprocation of affection and often joy. Well, through this negative mind usage, the very few humans are full emotionally. We hold back our emotions unlike all the other animals on the planet. Have you ever seen an animal, a pet, that did not give out affection? Well, if the survival guard is down on an animal, they'll give you back affection, you can be sure. Now, the energies flowing around in our dimension are both measurable and unmeasurable. And this didn't confuse the ancients, but it's uh, constricted the perception of materialistic scientists today. The ancients knew that all of creation is only a collection of interlinking energies and material things only existed because of the way these energies were directed by intelligence. Well, the chaos of the Greeks and the Nox of the Romans and the Ner of the Egyptians and Parabrahm of the Indias and Tao of the Chinese were simply terms for this ocean of undirected energy. And only the ancient Hebrew priests chose to ignore these concepts and build up a singular divinity to blame creation and events on. And this has caused chaos to the followers of religion. People are taught to think their creator is responsible for the actions going on around them. And instead of realizing that events only come through natural law, that we're all responsible for our own luck and our world, the world we live in. Well, why our knowledge was perverted and twisted away from the purer and more reasonable forms of the ancient is a complex tale, and yet it's very simple in its outline. Well, the priests who perverted the truth actually told the tale themselves. Satan, or Diablos, was originally cast to earth and was the opposite of the Creator in vibration and action. This term, diabolos, originally meant thrown down from the spirit plane to dense matter. The ancient traditions pointed out that our species was contaminated by these early gods and lost our instinct knowledge and perfection. The later Hebrew priests boiled it all down to the Garden of Eden and our species eating of the fruit of knowledge. Legends often cover similar background in the same simplistic stories in many countries. We've all heard of Prometheus starting fire from heaven, stealing it. And this is latent in all mankind. We need to take the atoms and transmute them, as plants do from the rays of the sun. Great spiritual teachers, such as Jesus Christ, even showed that it could be done mentally by a human being. And even the Hebrews and their earliest traditions of creation were much more accurate than the picture that's come down through the censorship of later priests. Now, when the original accounts of creation were written by the Hebrews, they used the term Elohim.